Hi, and welcome to the Surveil Cost Optimization Asset Management Tool demonstration. So the very first step uh, that a customer would go through when signing up with Surveil is actually just signing into the portal. It literally takes five clicks to get federated. In this instance, we've already been federated, but I'll go ahead and show you. So you'd sign in uh, using Microsoft. Right, and then when we get to this page, uh, if you have not done your Azure Health Check yet, you'd have one more window before this, and it'd say authorize your um, you know, authorize your bill to actually do a read only uh, asset management consolidation uh, report, and basically it's two clicks. You authorize it, and you're only authorizing it into the licensing environment. So. Um, the Surveil tool is the first of its kind to use uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence to create tags uh, inside of your licensing environment. It's uh, read-only, uh, and uh, you can take the tags that is created on our side on Surveil and actually apply them to your current. Um, but there is no, um, you know, need for you know PII. Uh, we're not getting into your network, and we're not downloading any type of uh, agent. Now, the first things that we would do is after we onboarded you. Um, we'd actually sit there and we'd wait three weeks to actually get into it because it needs to read the telemetry. And after we do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you, we get into it. And this would be your very first page that you look. And it's basically an overview of the Surveil Asset Management Tool. And there's three different sections here that are really important to note. One is the Azure um, you know, investment, uh, the a Azure section. Next one is the Office 365 section, but then there's also a risk and governance section. So when we let it sit for three weeks, there's three areas that we're gonna go to originally. I'll show you those three different areas. The very first one is Azure. So we would take a look at your Azure environment and the first, um, the first section that we'd actually go to uh, is the overview page that would basically take a look at all of the different uh, Azure environments that are there. It'll give us a total cost. This is a very small environment. Um, what are how many are virtual machines? Give us some knowledge about our services uh, and networking. And let me go ahead and, and click on analytics. And while this is going, this is actually using Power BI embedded uh, to take a look at this. So when we click on analytics, the first thing it's going to do is give us a really great overview of all of the different subscriptions, the actual Azure current cost, resource categories, gives us our top five cost by, by meter, tells us what our total spend year over year, but we can actually go into any one of these different uh, areas, the cost summary, uh, you know, virtual machines, what they're being used over time. Uh, we can get into subscriptions. Uh, where we can actually look at the subscriptions and say, okay, if you know these are the top 10 subscriptions inside of Azure, uh, here you go, this is what the costs are, this is what the percentage change per periods, and we can get into. So as you see here, uh, we can actually uh, get very, very deep, but this is one of the first few things that we'd actually look at. But the second thing we'd actually look at after we kind of did a little bit of digging in here is actually get into the recommendations. And this is what we really love. So I'm gonna go over to, to summary. Now, a lot of folks will tell you that, you know, Azure Advisor, and there is stuff that are inside of Azure that they, they can tell you some cost management, but Microsoft typically does not provide uh, all this extra detail uh, to understanding what's going wrong. And what we've noticed with Azure specifically uh, we've noticed that reserved instance, hybrid use benefit, idle services, idle databases, and the wrong type of disk um, typically equate to about a wastage of between 30 and 45 percent. So for instance, when you take a look at this particular screen, this says, okay, uh, it's going to say, well, after we monitor your whole Azure environment, we're going to look at what we can do. And it says here, there's potential savings in this very small demo environment. There's a thousand dollars in potential savings. We click into the details and it basically will tell us all of the different subscriptions, what could be used with reserved instance per se. Okay. That's, that's a, a really you know, good detail. And if we go ahead and implement these, these are the types of change and or savings that we can see over, over the year. The second thing is idle services. We find that in a lot of test dev environments, there's a lot of idle services that are set there. A lot of people are spinning up machines or leaving them, and it ends up being a lot of wasted. So with this tool, it's gonna to do, it's gonna help us understand what are idle and what can we go ahead and optimize uh, to reduce our overall cost. Next is the hybrid use benefit. And you know, one of the things that Microsoft uh, you know, does is they talk about a few ways to save money, but the majority of pay-as-you-go and enterprise, uh, uh, enterprise uh, clients aren't utilizing the hybrid use benefit or the reserved instance benefit. And, and the hybrid use benefit basically says if you already have a server on-prem, you don't need to double pay and pay it in Azure. So what this tool is going to do is right away is going to find out, okay, 
what what Azure instances can be, you know, if we use the hybrid use benefit and what would the cost and savings be uh, with that, right? Uh, so we have the idle databases we kind of uh, talked about, uh, or the hybrid benefit, uh, you know, they have some Azure recommendations, but there's also another thing like abandoned disks, right? Who's using these, who, who, who turned on SD disks or whatnot? Um, you know, what's been abandoned, but what are you still being charged for? Uh, or it's, you know, storage or oversized services. So really, <clears throat> what this is going to do, the recommendation after those three weeks, is really give us a high-level overview of what to, to manage, right, and how to manage it. Because, you know, Microsoft and being cloud and being elastic is fantastic. However, you know, the problem with that is, you know, if you're not constantly monitoring or constantly watching this, things change and happen. You know, and, and, and the last thing I want to mention, while this is great initially, we can fix you initially, you do need to constantly monitor this so that you know uh, we don't have instances where somebody come in, maybe from your test dev environment, spins up these really monster machines, puts on H, you know, um, uh, some pretty high level memory and leaves them running, right? It's just absolute wastage. So that's really on the, on the Azure side. The second piece I wanna show you real quick is on the Office 365 side. So when we run this Azure Health Check, the very first thing it's gonna do it's, you know, after three weeks, we're gonna come back into this and we're gonna get into the overview. Now, this is a smaller demo test environment, but it's, it's worth taking a look at. So just one second while it comes up. The beauty of this is gonna give us an overview of all of the, the accounts, every account that you possibly have, right? And it's gonna tell you, for example, Office 365 is managing accounts across 24 company names in eight different countries, right? The organization has 30, 320 accounts managed in Office 365. Of those, 302 are enabled, uh, and 103, 34% have been active in the last 30 days. This is really where we're going to start helping manage the joiners and the leavers, and that's like our next one. You know, who's joining the company and who's leaving the company? So the second thing we'll look at is joiners and leavers, right? So we want to monitor this over time. We want to monitor who's joining the company, who's leaving the company, what accounts are being processed, what accounts are not being processed, you know, do we deprecate these? Do we keep these on? Do we keep these off? Managing this is a full-time environment, especially for large, very large organizations. Another thing we can look into uh, after we do the health check is the use of op office applications. And, and this kind of comes down to, you know, what licenses do you have? Do you have E3? Do you have E5? Are you buying a lot of a lot of licensing that you don't need those applications and then how, how do you manage those? So if we took into Office applications, fantastic, we can do this. Uh, next is, is licensing management. And this is probably one of the biggest pieces with large organizations. It's, you know, what are we committed to? You know, who's actually using, using this? 61% in this case have been active, right? Well, what if we had 11,000 users, right? That's, that's, that's very interesting. Talks about licensing costs. We can kind of dive deep into it, right? So as you can see in here, we just get a lot of information, right, uh, on these things. We can look at different devices, who's using what. But what I wanna show you here, and I think where the money comes into place is the recommendations piece. So in recommendations, and this is after we let it run for three weeks, the first thing we'll do is say, okay, look, you have a lot of inactive users, right? So we can look at the details and we can really print and download a whole Excel spreadsheet of all of the inactive users that you're currently paying money for. So this is all wastage, right? So wastage, we're trying to optimize your environment, right? Next thing we'll do is say, hey, look, we need to dis disable accounts with licenses. These are, you have a ton of licenses that are just keep going and you need to disable those, but it's so hard to manage, especially in a large organization, right? Um, another one here, assign accounts with uh, that have non-active Visio licenses. And we see this as a big thing, especially with enterprise accounts, there's a lot of extra, you know, um, application licenses that are kind of stuffed in as part of the agreement. And we want to help you reorganize and go through that, right? Uh, we have um, non-active uh, project professional licenses, uh, no OneDrive, but we can get into, you know, specific analytics with this tool. It's just a fantastic uh, way of actually drilling deeper and deeper and deeper. Now, we're, we're, going, we're just scratching the surface here, but what we can do for example, licensing SKU, Microsoft 365 E3, you have 78 uh, that are assigned with the assigned cost of X, right? But we want to figure out what have been disabled, you know, what have been aged out, what can we do, how can we manage these things, right? We have optimization, and then we can also do uh, get into license savings. So we have a nice little savings report here. If we're to you know, uh, manage this, we could see 81% if we manage this 
uh, correctly. So this is on the recommendations. We can go into groups, joiners, levers. We can get so deep into this, uh, but what's really important is understanding, you know, how we go about it and how we, uh, uh, you know, manage the licensing over time. So the the health check is going to give you a really great front end report but it's not gonna help you manage it over time. Now, the third piece of the surveil asset management tool is using the, the security and governance piece. Now, uh, and this is something that needs to be active and ongoing. So currently in this state, you know, Microsoft uses this thing called secure score. And that's, you know, are you turning on multi-factor authentication? Are you turning on single sign-on? Have you turned on Microsoft Intune, right? Is the mobile device management or mobile access management? Do you have conditional access policies? And you know you want to have a high score, right? You want to have, and, and if you have an environment with a lot of E5 licenses, you know you could go from 52 to 91 percent. And what this is going to show us is going to, first of all, after three weeks, it's going to give us a security at a glance. It's going to take a look at conditional access policies, authentication methods. Whoops, let me go ahead and get out of that. Uh, insider threat and data leakage, right? Managing devices. And it's going to tell us what's being managed, what's not being managed. Managing the identities. It gives us full access reporting, you know, at, at a glance. And we can drill deep into any one of these different metrics even further. But what I also like about it is the third party. It'll basically say, hey, you know, we, we think you're probably double paying for a lot of these services. Mimecast, McAfee, Zscaler, Cisco, AirWatch. You're double paying. You don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket per se, but you also want to be in a position where you're not double, triple, quadruple paying. And there's a lot of ways of doing that. Lastly, you might be asking, well, how about licensing management? Like, how do we do this? So there's an amazing, amazing matrices here that will basically show us, okay, you have 200, uh, you've purchased 200 E3s, you've consumed 77 out of them, and the item cost is X. So if we go down here, we can actually hover over any one of these different uh, licensing and it'll tell us what the description is, what we should do, what, we, what would happen if we were to enable it, what would, you know, what is the percentage of adopting, and we can basically use this as a license management tool, okay? And the last thing I'm gonna mention here really quickly is what we'll get after this. So after three weeks, we'll also get a nice report that is gonna show us, okay, what are our micro, current Microsoft costs per year? What are the current you know, third party costs that we have per year? If we were to actually turn on the licensing that we're buying using the, uh, the E5s that we have, this is what we can optimize. You know, in this case, we have $99,000 in optimization costs, um, and we can remove a lot of the, the, um, the, the third party security costs. So really this, you know, what, what, what the surveil tool really does, uh, first and foremost, is it you know, uses our health check to first and foremost, find, reconfigure and optimize your environment. And then we use this tool to monitor and manage all of your licensing and security and governance in your Microsoft 365 and, um, and Azure portal. Uh, and we manage it uh, over the lifetime. So in that lifetime commitment is either between one year or, th or three years. Thanks for uh, taking a look at this. Uh, we look forward to speaking to you about uh, this great and fantastic tool.